Hey everyone, today we're diving into a crucial topic in women's health, ovarian cancer, which sadly stands as the most lethal of all gynecological cancers. Here's the thing, most ovarian cancer patients are diagnosed at a late stage. And even though there's initial success in managing advanced cases, recurrence is a common, heart-wrenching reality. That brings us to metronomic chemotherapy, it's this innovative approach involving chronic, consistent, and typically low doses of chemotherapy drugs, given without long breaks. Studies are showing some promising results for ovarian cancer treatment. What's really remarkable is how quickly patients respond to metronomic therapy, with noticeable improvements often seen just months after starting. Plus, it's generally well tolerated and, get this, the cost is surprisingly low. Especially for those who might be hesitant about standard treatments, metronomic chemotherapy offers a glimmer of hope in recurrent ovarian cancer. But there's more work to be done. We need more comprehensive trials to really understand how this novel treatment can be used effectively, particularly in the maintenance phase of ovarian cancer. Stay tuned as we unravel more about this exciting development in cancer therapy. We aim to provide valuable educational and informational content. However, this video does not offer medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment guidance. Our content is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. We strongly advise consulting a qualified healthcare professional for any medical queries or issues. The medical information in this video is provided as is. We do not make any claims, express or implied, about the completeness, accuracy, reliability, suitability, or availability of the video content. Relying on this information is entirely at your own risk. This video does not recommend or endorse any specific tests, physicians, procedures, opinions, or other information. Medical knowledge is constantly evolving, hence, the information in this video could become outdated, incomplete, or incorrect. We are not liable for any errors, omissions, losses, or damages incurred from viewing, using, or relying on this information. It's important to note that each patient's situation is unique, especially when discussing clinical data and research on metronomic low-dose chemotherapy in ovarian cancer. Treatment approaches and outcomes can significantly vary based on individual circumstances. By viewing this video, you acknowledge and agree that the creators, publishers, and affiliates of this video bear no liability for any direct, indirect, consequential, special, exemplary, or other damages that may arise from its usage. Thank you for watching. Remember, always consult a healthcare professional for any medical concerns. In the upcoming presentations, I will be discussing ovarian cancers. Metastatic epithelial ovarian cancer continues to be a persistent and serious health concern, highlighting the urgent need for additional treatment options. For patients who have already received substantial prior treatments, oral metronomic cyclophosphamide is an important treatment component. In the context of platinum-resistant ovarian cancer, topotecan has established itself as an effective standalone treatment option. Moreover, Bevacizumab has been authorized for use in both platinum-sensitive relapsed and resistant forms of ovarian cancer, playing a key role during both the induction and maintenance phases of therapy. At the same time, there is an increasing interest in expanding research and clinical trials, geared towards metronomic and angiogenesis targeted treatment methods for these tumors. Notably, Despite the inclusion of various metronomic regimens in the National Comprehensive Cancer Network's current guidelines for recurrent ovarian cancer, their adoption in routine clinical practice remains limited. This study was led by Dr. Emma Barber, alongside her colleagues at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine, and the Robert Lurie Comprehensive Cancer Center. The main goal of their research was to assess the effectiveness, progression-free survival, and overall survival rates associated with a specific combination of treatments for ovarian carcinoma. These treatments include intravenous bevacizumab and oral cyclophosphamide. Bevacizumab was administered at a dosage of 10 mg per kilogram, every 14 days, 
while cyclophosphamide was given orally at 50 mg daily. This investigation was conducted retrospectively, focusing on patients who had previously undergone extensive treatment for recurrent ovarian carcinoma. A critical aspect of this study was that, all patients showed resistance to platinum-based chemotherapy, either primarily or secondarily, at the time they received the treatment combination of bevacizumab and cyclophosphamide. The patients had a varied history of chemotherapy, with a median of 6.5 prior treatments, ranging from 3 to 16. However, treatment is not without its challenges. In this study, 8 patients, which is 12.1% of the group, experienced side effects, significant enough to require discontinuation of the treatment. There was also a report of a serious side effect, with one patient experiencing bowel perforation, representing 1.5% of the study group. Despite these challenges, the results of the treatment were notable. The overall response rate was 42.4%. This included a complete response in 7 patients, or 10.6%, and a partial response in 21 patients, which is 31.8%. Additionally, 15 patients, or 22.7%, achieved stable disease, while 23 patients, 34.8% of the group, experienced disease progression. When we look at the survival outcomes, the median progression-free survival for those who responded to the treatment was 5 months, with a range of 2 to 14 months. The median overall survival, OS, from the initiation of bevacizumab and cyclophosphamide treatment, was 20 months for responders, ranging from 2 to 56 months. For non-responders, the median OS was 9 months, with a range of 2 to 51 months. This difference in survival rates was statistically significant. In conclusion, the combination of bevacizumab and cyclophosphamide, presence as an effective and generally well-tolerated chemotherapy regimen, for heavily pretreated patients with recurrent ovarian carcinoma. This regimen not only improved progression-free and overall survival rates in responders, but also showed response rates that were comparable and favorable to those observed with other second-line chemotherapeutic agents used in similar patient populations. We're discussing a phase two trial spearheaded by Dr. Rose of the Gynecologic Oncology Group, at Case Western Reserve University. The focus of this study was to evaluate the effectiveness of prolonged oral atoposide in the treatment of ovarian carcinoma. The trial was particularly concerned with patients who had shown either resistance or sensitivity to platinum-based chemotherapy treatments. The central drug in this study, atoposide, was administered following a specific dosage regimen. Initially, Patients were given 50 mg per square meter per day for a 21-day period, with this cycle repeating every 28 days. This dosage plan was designed for patients who had not received prior radiotherapy. In contrast, patients with a history of radiotherapy received a reduced starting dose of 30 mg per square meter per day, also over a 21-day cycle. A key component of this treatment approach was the ability to adjust the dosage based on each patient's individual response and tolerance. The atoposide dosage could be escalated to a maximum of 60 mg per square meter per day, allowing for a personalized treatment approach that aims to optimize efficacy while minimizing potential side effects. Let's delve into the results of the GUG study, led by Dr. Rose, focusing on ovarian carcinoma treatment. The study included 99 patients, with 97 assessable for toxicity, and 82 for response. Primary goal is to assess the treatment's effectiveness in patients with either platinum-resistant or platinum-sensitive ovarian carcinoma. Starting with the platinum-resistant group, among 41 patients, the response rate to the treatment was 26.8%. This was broken down into a 7.3% complete response and a 19.5% partial response. The median duration of response in this group was 4.3 months, and the median progression-free interval stood at 5.7 months. 
The median survival time was observed to be 10.8 months. Of note in this platinum-resistant group, 25 patients had previously been treated with paclitaxel. In this subgroup, 32% responded to the treatment. Turning our attention to the platinum-sensitive group, out of 41 patients, there was a 34.1% response rate. This included 14.6% who had a complete response, and 19.5% with a partial response. The median duration of response here was 7.5 months, with the median progression-free interval extending beyond 6.3 months. The median survival time for this group was significantly longer, at over 16.5 months. An important aspect of this study is the toxicity profile. The study reported that grade 3 or 4 hematologic toxicity was quite common. Specifically, leukopenia occurred in 41.2% of patients, thrombocytopenia in 9%, and anemia in 13.4%. There were also three treatment-related deaths, two resulting from neutropenic sepsis, and one from thrombocytopenic bleeding, due to an overdose. Additionally, there was one case of leukemia development, a serious concern. In summary, this treatment regimen was found to be active, in managing both platinum-resistant and platinum-sensitive ovarian carcinoma, including cases resistant to paclitaxel. However, the risk of significant hematologic toxicity cannot be overlooked. This study provides valuable insights, into the balance between the effectiveness and risks, of this treatment approach in ovarian carcinoma, guiding future therapeutic strategies. Now, we're going to examine the results of a phase 2 trial, conducted by Dr. Maury Markman from the University of Texas, MD Anderson Cancer Center. This trial was part of the Gynecologic Oncology Group's efforts, to understand the effectiveness of single-agent, weekly paclitaxel in treating ovarian cancer, specifically in patients who have shown resistance, to both platinum-based treatments, and paclitaxel when administered every three weeks. In this trial, 48 patients, all of whom had ovarian cancer resistant to both platinum, and paclitaxel, were treated with single-agent weekly paclitaxel. The dosage was set at 80 mg per square meter per week, and the treatment continued until the disease showed progression. Now, let's focus on the outcomes. In this group of patients, who had already shown resistance to two major forms of chemotherapy, the objective response rate was 20.9%. This indicates that a noteworthy proportion of patients responded positively to this treatment approach. When it comes to safety and tolerability, which are crucial factors in any cancer treatment, serious adverse events were relatively uncommon in this trial. Specifically, neuropathy, occurred at grade 2 in 21% of patients, and at grade 3 in 4% of patients. Additionally, grade 3 fatigue was reported in 8% of patients. In conclusion, the results from this study suggest that, the weekly administration of paclitaxel can be an effective management strategy, for women with ovarian cancer, resistant to both platinum, and paclitaxel, administered every three weeks. This finding provides valuable insight for oncologists, seeking alternative treatment options, for patients who have not responded to conventional chemotherapy regimens. A randomized phase 2 trial was conducted, to explore the efficacy and safety of weekly administration of topotecan, compared to the conventional 5-day therapy in women facing platinum-resistant recurrent ovarian cancer. This trial aims to provide a clearer understanding of the benefits, and potential drawbacks associated with each treatment approach. A total of 194 patients, from 54 different medical centers, were randomly assigned to two protocols. They were either administered topotecan at a dose of 4 mg per square meter weekly, or 1.25 mg per square meter daily on days 1 to 5. The results showed that clinical benefit was observed in 47% of patients receiving topotecan weekly, and 58% of those on the topotecan 5-day protocol. It was noted that patients in the topotecan weekly group, 
had a slightly shorter progression-free survival but similar overall survival, when compared to those on conventional five-day therapy. Moreover, the weekly administration of topotecan demonstrated significantly lower risks of anemia, neutropenia, and thrombocytopenia. In conclusion, when evaluating effectiveness, the conventional five-day therapy remains the standard of care for patients with platinum-resistant recurrent ovarian cancer. However, the comparable overall survival, and the favorable toxicity profile associated with the weekly administration of topotecan, make it a viable alternative treatment option in this clinical context. In the context of advanced epithelial ovarian cancer, an evaluation of oral metronomic therapy was conducted retrospectively to assess patient outcomes. A total of 36 patients with advanced epithelial ovarian cancer were administered oral metronomic therapy. These patients had previously undergone a median of two rounds of chemotherapy. The oral metronomic therapy regimen consisted of a combination of cyclophosphamide, atoposide, and celecoxib, with or without pazopanib, in addition to receiving supportive care. The results revealed an overall response rate of 50%. The median progression-free survival was 8.2 months, while the median overall survival was 38 months. Notably, patients who had received two rounds of chemotherapy before commencing oral metronomic therapy, as well as those who were on pazopanib-based oral metronomic therapy, exhibited improved progression-free survival. For individuals facing relapsed and refractory epithelial ovarian cancer, oral metronomic therapy represents a viable treatment option. In a recent study from Poland led by Dr. Wysaki, a retrospective analysis was conducted, on 72 advanced ovarian cancer patients undergoing metronomic low-dose chemotherapy. This treatment comprised either topotecan as a standalone agent, or its combination with cyclophosphamide referred to as the CYTA regimen. The combination doses are topotecan 1 mg every other day, and cyclophosphamide 50 mg daily. The study revealed notable clinical benefits, with the median progression-free survival for all patients being 3.6 months, which increased to 10.7 months in those showing a biochemical response. Additionally, 27.2% of patients achieved positive response rates, while 86% attained disease control. Despite myelotoxicity being the most common treatment-related adverse event, affecting about a third of the patients significantly, this research was pivotal in being the first to report the safe and effective use of the topotecan and a cyclophosphamide combination in ovarian cancer. Overall, Wysaki's study highlighted the effectiveness of the combination regimen of topotecan and cyclophosphamide, in metronomic low-dose fashion, providing significant clinical benefits in advanced ovarian cancer patients, even amidst a considerable incidence of treatment-related adverse events. In wrapping up, let's not forget the gravity of ovarian cancer's impact as the most lethal of gynecological cancers. Diagnosed often too late, patients face a daunting path, where the specter of recurrence looms large even after initial treatment successes. Yet, in the shadow of these challenges, metronomic chemotherapy emerges as a beacon of innovation. Its strategy of administering low doses without extended breaks is already showing promise. The swiftness of patient responses and the exceptional tolerance to treatment, coupled with the affordability, underscore its potential as a lifeline, especially for those wary of traditional therapies. While metronomic chemotherapy shines a light on new possibilities, the journey is far from over. Only through rigorous, targeted trials can we fully unlock its potential in maintenance therapy for ovarian cancer. For those eager to follow the progress of this promising treatment or with questions specific to your circumstances, Omega Precision Oncology Clinic is at your service, ready to provide answers and support. Let's continue to watch this space with hope and determination.